All right, so we've discussed linear approximation and quadratic approximation, and so now we're going to look more generally at a degree n approximation. Okay, and now looking at the graph of a function f near a point a comma f of a, we have the linear approximation p1 of x in green, right? This is degree 1. And we have the quadratic approximation, that's p2 of x, that's degree 2. And we just as well could look at a cubic approximation, I'll call that p3 of x, right? That's a degree 3 polynomial. And we could look at a quartic approximation, okay, p4 of x, that's a degree 4 polynomial, okay, so on and so forth, okay? So this leads us to what we'll call the nth Taylor polynomial based at a. This is pn of x, and it's defined as follows, okay? It's f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared plus f triple prime of a over 3 factorial times x minus a cubed. And then you'd get the fourth derivative of f evaluated at a over 4 factorial times x minus a to the fourth, so on and so forth until you get to the nth derivative of f evaluated at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. Okay, now a note here on the notation. This n up here is not an exponent. Okay, this expression indicates the nth derivative of f evaluated at a. Okay, now for the first three derivatives, we use primes, but by the time you get to the fourth derivative and higher, those primes all start to blur together, and so it's nicer to use this notation where you're just clearly indicating what uh, derivative it is you're looking at. All right, so now I want to remind you of something that we saw in the last video. Okay, now if you look at the first three terms of pn of x, okay, these first three terms are really p2 of x, right, that we built in the last video. And where do these coefficients come from, right? The f of a, f prime of a, and the f double prime of a over 2 factorial. Okay, well those came from the conditions we wanted to place on this parabola p2 of x so that it would be a good approximator to our blue curve near x equals a. Okay, and those three conditions were as follows, right? The first condition was that we wanted our parabola to pass through this point a comma f of a. That's where this f of a came from, right? We also wanted the slope of the parabola to equal the slope of the blue curve at this point. That's where this f prime of a came from. And then we also wanted the concavity, which is really controlled by the second derivative, right? We wanted the concavity of P2 to match the concavity of the blue curve at this point. And that's where this coefficient, f double prime of a over 2 factorial came from. Okay, now if we were looking at the uh, cubic approximation, so P3 of x, well, I still want all of these conditions that I have for P2 to hold for p3, right? I want the cubic curve to pass through this point, so I'm still going to have my f of a. I want the slopes to match, so that's uh, I'm still going to have this f prime of a here. I want the concavities to match, so I'm still going to have this f double prime of a over 2 factorial. And then, since I'm working with a degree 3 polynomial, right, for p3 of x, I now can place a condition on the third derivative right? And I want the third derivative of p3 at this point to match the third derivative of f at this point, okay? And that's going to give rise to this coefficient, f triple prime of a over 3 factorial, okay? And the same reasoning holds for the higher order approximations, okay? So that's where this nth derivative of f evaluated at a over n factorial is really coming from. It's coming from the fact that we want these function values and the derivatives up to the nth order to all match, okay? So again, this first condition that pn of a is equal to f of a just says pn of x passes through this point. This condition on the derivatives means they have the same slope. This condition on the second derivatives means they have the same concavity, okay? Now, if you go to the higher order uh, derivatives, like the third derivative, for example, well, first remember, concavity really measures what? It measures how slope changes. The third derivative measures how concavity changes. So it's a more fine-tuned measurement 
of the shape of the blue curve, okay? If you go to the fourth derivative, well, that's telling you how the third derivative changes, so that's a even more fine-tuned measurement of the shape of the blue curve. But the point here is that since all of these function values and the, and the derivatives match up to the nth orders is saying that our polynomial approximation, Pn of x, is going to very closely mimic the shape of the blue curve near this point x equals a because of all of these uh, fine-tuned measurements being adjusted to match at this point x equals a. Okay, that's the big idea. Okay, so it's in that sense that we say pn of x is the degree n polynomial that best approximates f of x for x close to a. All right, so now let's look at an example. So looking at the worksheet, it says, compute the nth Taylor polynomial for f of x equal to e to the x base to a equals zero. Graph these polynomials, what do you observe? Okay, so the first thing to note is that since f prime of x is equal to e to the x itself, that implies, right, that the nth derivative of f is also e to the x, and so if I evaluate those at zero, I'm just gonna get one, right, for all of those derivatives, okay? So what that says when I go to the definition for pn of x, right, I'm gonna get f of zero here, that's a one, plus f prime of zero times x minus zero, and that's gonna be a one, and then here I'm gonna get a one for the f double prime of zero, then a one here for the f triple prime of zero, so on and so forth, okay? So here's what we're looking at. I'm gonna get one plus one times x minus zero, plus one over two factorial x minus zero squared, plus one over three factorial x minus zero cubed, so on and so forth until you get to one over n factorial times x minus zero to the n which simplifies to one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial and so on until you get to x to the n over n factorial. Okay, so that is the nth Taylor polynomial for e to the x based at a equals zero. All right, now let's go ahead and graph these. So here is our function, right, our, our curve e to the x in blue. So there's p1 of x that we looked at in the first video. That's just the tangent line. There's p2 of x, right, that's what we saw in the last video, the quadratic approximation. Then we have p3 of x, okay, this is the cubic approximation, so 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Then you got p4, okay, and of course, as we can see, right, as the degree increases, right, we're getting better and better approximations, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, take those out just so it's a little less cluttered. Okay, I'm gonna graph just Pn of x for a general n, and here I'll start out with just n going from one to 10. So here is P1 right now, and now with the slider, there's P2, P3, P4, that's what we've already seen. Now if I keep going, I can see, right, I'm getting better and better approximations, right? These polynomial curves are matching my blue exponential curve, right? And, the, and it's just getting better and better. And I can see, like, right here, this is uh, P8, okay? It looks, like, indecipherable from the exponential curve until you get to around here, then things kind of start to fall apart. If I go all the way out to 10, okay, just kind of drags out that tail longer and longer. Let's go to say, or maybe I'll do 50, because the calculator might start to struggle here. If I keep going, I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, you see this sort of dog tail wagging as you, <laughs> as you uh, increase n there. But the point again being, what we're really seeing here is that these polynomials right, these are converging to our exponential function is really what's happening here, okay? So what we're gonna see in the next couple of videos is this very idea just uh, made a little bit more precise, right? As we let n, right, the order of the, or rather the degree of the Taylor polynomial increase, okay, we get better and better approximations to our function. Okay, well, that's a good place to stop. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.